track ballast forms the track bed upon which railway sleepers or railroad ties are laid. It is packed between, below, and around the ties. It is used to bear the load from the railroad ties, to facilitate drainage of water, and also to keep down vegetation that might interfere with the track structure. This also serves to hold the track in place as the trains roll by. It is typically made of crushed stone, although ballast has sometimes consisted of other, less suitable materials. The term ballast comes from a nautical term for the stones used to stabilize a ship. Construction The thickness of a layer of the track ballast depends on the size and spacing of the ties, the amount of traffic expected on the line, and various other factors. Track ballast should never be laid down less than 150 mm thick. High-speed railway lines may require ballast up to 1 or 2 meter thick. An insufficient depth of ballast overloads the underlying soil. In the worst cases, this can cause the track to sink. If the ballast is less than 300 mm thick, this can lead to vibrations, which can damage nearby structures. Track ballast typically sits on a layer of sub-ballast. The latter is typically made of small crushed stones. It gives a solid support for the top ballast, and seals out water from the underlying ground. Sometimes, an elastic mat was placed under the ballast layer as well. This can allow for significant reductions in vibration. It is essential for ballast to be piled as high as the ties, and for a substantial shoulder to be placed at their ends. The latter being especially important, since this ballast shoulder is, for the most part, the only thing restraining lateral movement of the track. The ballast shoulder should be at least 150 mm wide under any circumstances, and may be as large as 450 mm. Maintenance If ballast is badly fouled, the clogging will reduce its ability to drain properly. This, in turn, causes more debris to be sucked up from the sub-ballast, causing more fouling. Therefore, keeping the ballast clean is essential. Remediation can be used to clean ballast. It is not always necessary to replace the ballast if it is fouled, nor must all the ballast be removed if it is to be cleaned. Removing and cleaning the ballast from the shoulder is often sufficient, if shoulder ballast is removed to the correct depth. While this job was historically done by manual labor, this process is now, like many other railway maintenance tasks, a mechanized one with a chain of specially designed railroad cars handling the task. One wagon cuts the ballast and passes it via a conveyor belt to a cleaning machine, then the cleaning wagon washes the ballast, and deposits the dirt and ballast into other wagons for disposal and reuse, respectively. Such machines can clean up to two kilometers of ballast in an hour. Cleaning, however, can only be done a certain number of times before the ballast is damaged to the point that it cannot be reused. Furthermore, track ballast that is completely fouled cannot be corrected by shoulder cleaning. In such cases, it is necessary to replace the ballast altogether. One method of replacing ballast, if necessity demands, is to simply dump fresh ballast on the track, jack the whole track on top of it, and then tamp it down. Alternatively, the ballast underneath the track can be removed with an undercutter, which does not require removing or lifting the track. The dump and jack method cannot of course be used through tunnels, under overbridges, and where there are platforms. Where the track is laid over a swamp, such as the Hexheim Swamp in Australia, the ballast continuously sinks, and needs to be topped up to maintain its line and level. After 150 years of topping up, there appears to be 10 m of sunken ballast under the tracks. Chat moss in the United Kingdom is similar. Regular inspection of the ballast shoulder is important. 